Welcome back everybody, I'm Jake the Scary Story Guy and today we're talking about a new film called The Boogeyman which is based on a short story of the same name that Stephen King published all the way back in 1973. That's 50 years ago if you can believe it. King originally published this in a magazine when he was only 25 years old and it didn't make it into one of his actual published collections, Night Shift, until five years later. So because I am chipping away at a Stephen King review series on here, we are going to talk about the story just a little bit at the end in addition to our main review of this film. Okay, so The Boogeyman was originally supposed to be a straight to Hulu horror film. Uh, which that's not exactly a thriving brand thus far, but a couple factors conspired to earn this a theatrical release. The first is that it had a positive test screening, but the second and far more interesting factor here is that Stephen King himself actually pushed for this to be released theatrically. The filmmakers rented out a screen in King's favorite hometown theater where he could go and watch it before it was released and give him some feedback on it. He wrote back to them with all this glowing feedback, including, and I quote the line, they'd be f***ing stupid not to release this in theaters. Now, King and I don't always agree on horror films, not even adaptations of his own work, but on this one, I've got to say, the man was right. The Boogeyman is not, like, earth-shatteringly good. It may not even end up being particularly memorable at the end of the day, but this is a highly competent horror film that I think going to theaters will really enhance the experience for. So we start off with a family, this therapist and his two daughters. They're kind of in the fresh stages of grief. The mother of this family has just recently died. And one day a fairly high-strung patient comes to see the therapist's father at their home, complaining that a, uh, a mysterious creature has killed his children. I say complaining like he's complaining about headaches or some shit, but it's a little more serious than that. And things sort of spiral from there. I'm going to try and do this without spoilers, just kind of touch on the broad notes that I got as I watched this movie. The first of which is that even though this is kind of a, a pretty standard mid-year horror flick, The Boogeyman is shockingly well executed. It's very competently made. But it's not just competence. Sometimes I think direction that is technically good can end up feeling a little bit stale. Like, I don't have any specific complaints. It's just something, there's, there's no spice here, you know? I've always thought Ron Howard was a good example of this, where he obviously knows what he's doing, but it's almost a, a paint-by-numbers style of direction. <laughs> it feels kind of preordained, the, the movie you're gonna get. Another example might be contrasting the third Harry Potter film, Prisoner of Azkaban, directed by Alfonso Cuaron, to all the other films in the Harry Potter franchise. The other directors were competent, they did their jobs, while Cuaron added his own kind of soul and unique flavor to the film on top of doing his job. The Boogeyman was directed by a guy named Rob Savage, which is a fantastic name for a guy who makes scary movies. And he kind of got his start making found footage horror films, and, and you could really feel his excitement as he's transferring to this almost entirely new medium where he's like, wow, I get to finally work behind some real equipment for a change. It really shows. The camera's always doing funky stuff. There's a really unique, fun style to this movie that actually reminded me a lot of The Black Phone, a horror movie I loved that came out last year. And the sound and creature design as well, I think, was a cut above what you normally get with this type of movie. There's this whispering effect throughout the movie that's really cool. I kept thinking that someone behind me was whispering and I'd like remember, oh, there's no one behind me because I'm the only one in the theater. Which brings me to, you know, something that I think is a bit of a bummer, which is that I'm predicting this movie will not perform well. I mean, look at what else is in theaters right now. We've got a new Spider-Verse movie, a new Guardians of the Galaxy movie, a new Fast and Furious movie, a, a live-action Little Mermaid movie. So I'm glad this got a theatrical release, but it's gonna get buried under all that competition, which is part of why I'm making this video, to just say, hey, this movie's pretty good, and uh, you're gonna get your money's worth if you go see it in theaters. In fact, I'd say even more than most movies, The Boogeyman is gonna be a better experience in the theater, just because of, like, the heightened sensations that a theater can provide. As far as other positives go, it's worth mentioning the acting here, especially that of this girl. Her name's Sophie Thatcher. I've never heard of her before, but she basically carries the entire movie in a role that's not really easy to do that with. I think few characters tend to be less sympathetic, less likable than moody teenager, right? But Sophie Thatcher really manages to walk a, a pretty fine line here between, you know, she is in a mood. You can tell she's going through it, but she's not being like, over, over... She's not doing too much. She's not being super abrasive with it, which is especially impressive considering that her character character is cursed with what may be the most terrible friend group to be committed to film in quite some time. I just, mild spoiler alert here, but I found myself walking away just very disappointed they didn't all die horrible deaths. But yeah, I thought there was a, a quiet emotionality to her performance. It's not over the top like a lot of horror performances can be, 
she's she's appropriately frightened, right? She's she's sad in a dignified way. Halfway through, I actually found myself hoping, like, I hope she becomes the new kind of it girl of horror movies, like Anya Taylor Joy or the new Janet Ortega or whatever, where they go on a run in the horror genre that catapults them into mainstream success. Because, like I said, she's really good. I also like Chris Messina as the dad, though I did find myself wondering, is his character just meant to go completely deaf every night? Like, you've got blood curdling screams and doors slamming shut the whole fucking night, and these kids are just on their own, man. This guy is nowhere to be found. Speaking of which, I do have some complaints, of course. There's some pretty bad dialogue in this movie, some pretty rough supporting characters kind of off to the side. Like, at one point, the main girl shows this lady a drawing of the monster and is like, what is this thing? And the lady says, pray you never find out, which, like, all right. And some of the things this girl's friends say to her during this movie is, are so horrible that it's it's not actually believable. Like, it's, it's like the screenwriter was like, okay, how can I convey that these girls are just all enormous bitches? And, and so gave them these lines that strained credulity just to really emphasize, like, see, they really suck. They're really mean. And like I said, there's not even a payoff to all that. They all live. It's a total blue ball. But it's fine. It's not like Stephen King wrote these characters, which let's get to his story for a sec, because surprisingly, the Stephen King story really only accounts for about five to ten minutes of this film. King's story is just the part of the movie where the creepy guy is talking to the therapist about, like, the, the, the boogeyman killed my kids, right? There's nothing about the therapist's family or anything like that. So when you hear based on the terrifying story by Stephen King, you should kind of take that with a grain of salt. I thought this was much better than King's story, actually, which is too short and bare bones to really be frightening. I think you can tell King was, was really sort of finding himself as a writer there and does a lot better with long form work. And to be honest, I wouldn't necessarily recommend anyone read it. It's not that great in my view, but I would recommend people watch this movie if they're looking to kill a summer afternoon with a fun horror flick. I'm gonna give The Boogeyman a very solid three stars out of five. I was considering three and a half, maybe feeling generous, but you know what? This isn't charity. Kill the friends next time. All right, guys, as always, stay tuned for more spooky content coming soon. And in the meantime, thank you for watching this video. And here's hoping you survive to see the next one.